Climate change is occurring. Earth is warming. In terms of global averages, the past decade is almost one and a half degrees Fahrenheit warmer than 100 years earlier. The first calculation that the greenhouse gases emitted by the burning of fossil fuels could actually change the Earth's climate was done in the 1890s. And so scientists have been looking very carefully at this question for a long time. The thing that's changed is that in the last 20 years, we really have much more extensive and richer sources of data, and we have much greater computing power. These climate changes are largely caused by human activities. Multiple lines of evidence indicate that most of the warming over the past several decades can be attributed to human activities that release heat-trapping greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. We, we understand that uh, much of the climate change we're seeing is being driven by emissions of greenhouse gases from activities like you know, producing the energy we need, producing food that we need. There are natural sources of CO2 emissions, but the pattern that we've seen is a very rapid increase in the concentration of CO2 in the, the atmosphere, so that CO2 concentrations are reaching a level that's the highest in the last 800,000 years. And when we trace the record historically, looking at records in air bubbles trapped in ice where we can do very accurate measurements, we see that that rise has occurred since the Industrial Revolution, about 1750, when humans began to use fossil fuels very substantially. We know how much is being emitted from activities like the burning of coal, oil, and gas, and we have a, a, a pretty good idea of how much is being emitted from deforestation and agricultural processes and so forth. Um, we can also tra link some of the gases that are in the atmosphere with their sources through the use of, of chemical fingerprints. Solar inputs matter very much. However, we know from measurements of solar inputs that they haven't, they haven't changed over the last 30 or 40 years at least, at the same time that climate is warming. So solar inputs themselves cannot explain it. Climate changers are already having consequences for things that we care about. Um, I mentioned sea level has risen about eight inches in the last century. As temperatures increase, sea level is rising, both because of the thermal expansion of water, because of more heat there, but also because of more input of water, fresh water from the glaciers, because the glaciers are melting. There is more precipitation falling in very intense downpours now than ever before because more, there's more runoff occurring and often more flooding is associated with that. There are more intense heat spells. There's uh, challenges to water resources now because in some places because of more drought in parts of the world and including the Western United States. Much greater frequency and intensity of wildfires. And all of these things um, are affected by climate, they're also affected by other things that people do. And so our level of certainty that absolutely connects climate change with all of those impacts is pretty great, but it's not complete. As the climate changes, ecosystems and human systems respond in complicated ways. So we're beginning to develop more understanding of, of those uh, risks, but it's an area that we very much need more research so we can delineate the, the risk more clearly Again, the system is very complicated. Given that we have entered a time when decision makers are asking not just what is happening, but what is happening and what should we do about it, our panel concluded that the scientific community needs to enter a new era of climate change research, one in which science not only contributes to our fundamental understanding about climate change about how the world works, but expands and informs America's climate choices. We examined 12 different sectors, ecosystems, uh, coastal systems in the ocean, the climate system itself, and so on, thinking about what kinds of decisions are being made in these areas and what kind of science is needed to support those decisions. We need to continue the basic science that helps us understand the fundamental physical, biological, and social processes that accompany climate change. But we also need to be doing research that helps people make more informed decisions. And what that requires to, to do that cross-cutting research, things like assessment of vulnerability, better climate modeling, better observation systems, more understanding of human behavior and institutions, 
um, is an integrated research program that cuts across the disciplines and is well co coordinated across many federal agencies. Yeah, lots of people have said to me, well, I just don't believe in climate change. And my answer is, you know, this is not about a belief. This is about evidence. This is about observations. This is about um, an accumulated body of knowledge that tells us something about the way the world is working. We are having a huge footprint on the planet. So it's very important at this point that we begin to think about ways to produce energy, to meet the needs of people, to produce food to meet the needs of people without having the negative consequences on the climate system.